four sex organ of the bull. They eat the bull, the male bull genitalia on a plate with a fork and a knife and some salt and pepper. <laughs> and call it a delicacy. And you sitting right there eating with them. You want a rattlesnake steak. <laughs> These people did this for 2,000 years in the caves and hillsides of Europe. They crawled around on their all fours. That's why our dear brothers in this house, who we love and respect, they should be here at this meeting today. We love them. The Grand Master of this Lodge should be sitting right up here. We have a special seat for the Grand Master the imperial grand potentate. We got a seat for all of them. The daughter was daughters of J Jericho and the heroines of Jericho and the Eastern Star. We got a special place for them because they are following after the white man's art and not after their own. They have 32 degrees, is that right? 32 degrees. But they say that they are upright on the square. Been raised from a dead level to a living perpendicular upright on the square. In order to be upright on the square, you must have a 90 degree angle. Is that right? It must be a 90 degree angle to be upright on the square. Half of that is what? Is a 45 degree angle. Is that right? 45 degree angle. But now here's the people who say they're upright on the square. And they got 32 degrees somewhere down here. And 32 degrees is freezing on the Fahrenheit scale. Then they get an honorary degree, the 33rd degree, and they go into the Shriners. Uh -huh. And they name their lodges Mecca Lodge, Medina Lodge. Muhammad Lodge, Elijah Lodge, huh? Quran Lodge. These are white folks, white presidents are members of the Quran Lodge, the Muhammad Lodge, the Mecca Lodge, the Medina Lodge. Did you know that? White judges, whites who are in corporate America, even white straw chewing, tobacco chewing, snuff dipping, overall wearing peckers down in the deep south that will call us a nigger in a minute. They believe in masonry and they are members of Quran Lodge and Muhammad Lodge and Mecca Lodge and all of these lodges. And they wear a fez with a black tassel on it. A red fez with a black tassel on it. Huh? With a star and crescent like this one turned upside down. Not right side up, but upside down. With a sword running through. You see him wearing it in diamonds in a lapel with a sword running through. The sword is there to remind the white man. You have robbed the black man and the black woman of their name, their language, their religion, their culture, their God, their folkways, their mores, their norms, and robbed them of the very power of their own being. And if you ever let the black man know who he really is, if you ever let the secret leak out of who the black woman really is, if they ever know who they really are, you will never be able to control them again. So that will be the hour of the resurrection of the dead, the rise of the black nation, and the fall and the demise of the white man. So they can't let you know who you are. Praise you for love. They can't let you know who you are, that you are actually a God, black man, and you are actually a goddess, black woman, and we are all children of the Most High God. You can read it in the 82nd chapter of the book of Psalms. Ye are gods, all of you children of the Most High God. It says, Arise, O God. That's the 82nd chapter of Psalms. Then they contend with Jesus. You know Jesus, right? Jesus, that's the black revolutionary messiah. Who is he? Now some of you can't say that because you're so used to a blonde haired, blue eyed, pale skin, buttermilk complexion, peckerwood up in the stained glass windows of your church. 
Here you are, blacker than the ace of spades. Some of you so black and beautiful until you blue black, purple black and beautiful. Some of you so black until you blacker than 150 million midnight. Hair so nappy and beautiful until it looks like a million black power fists standing up on top of your head. But you go to a church with a white Jesus, uh, a white Mary, am I lying? Tell the truth and shame the devil. <laughs> white angel with a white robe on and some white chicken wings. Huh? Some of you even believe God is white and you can't see him, you say. You believe the angels are white. When you close your eyes to pray, you see a white man. Oh, Lord, help me get out of this jail. <laughs> they done gave me 40 years. And you see a white man in your mind that looks just like the white man that gave you the damn 40 years. <laughs> How you gonna get out? <laughs> How in the hell are you gonna get out? <laughs> oh, Lord, the rent is due. Got a red notice on the phone, a red notice on the gas, a red notice on the light. The refrigerator is empty. Oh, Lord, please help me. And you see a white man in your mind who looks like the white man down at the water and power department who's going to turn the lights off. White man in your mind that looks just like the white man down there who's going to turn the gas off. Look just like the white man who's going to authorize the marshals to come and set your stuff out on the street. You look, he looks just like the white man that's going to serve you notice to get out of his house. The scriptures say he or she who calls on the name of the Lord God shall be saved. So the question is, have we been calling on the right name of God? Have we been calling on the right God? The question is, have we been calling on God at all? Or have we been calling on the devil? <laughs> have we been praying to the devil, hoping that God would overhear and answer? Or have we been praying to the devil, thinking that the devil was God? What is the best place? Where is the best place for the devil to hide? Well, the best place for the devil to hide is in the house of God. Huh? Isn't that the best place? Most people won't look for the devil in God's house. But the Bible says that God's coming would not be until after the workings of Satan. That Satan would be given a period of rule and reign to do his thing. But then God, that would be an Adventist day. An advent of the God, meaning the coming of God. God would be seen coming in the clouds. Doesn't mean you're going to walk outside one day and look up in the clouds and see somebody up in the clouds riding a reindeer or riding a cloud or some foolishness. It's symbolism. The Bible is speaking in parables, symbols, metaphors, and similes. And you must understand the parable, the symbol, the metaphor, and the simile. It means that he would be seen coming in the clouds of confusion. That it would be a time of great darkness. It would be a time of great peril and danger. It would be a time when it's very, very cloudy and the people would be in flux and confusion. But it says that when he would come, that he would dispel the darkness and the clouds and the confusion and he would break the power of the devil by the brightness of his coming. That's what the book says to us. So, finishing this up so we can move very quickly. These people here have only 32 degrees, which is crawling around, but they're 360 degrees. And in order to be upright, you've got to have at least 90 of those, and we start you out with that as soon as you join the Nation of Islam. Amen. You ain't got to pay $500, you ain't got to pay 1000 we don't take you in a secret room and beat you upside the head and paddle you on the back and tell you that you got to ride the goat. Hell, you've been riding the goat all your life. We don't tell you you got to cross the hot burning sands because you, you've been in the wilderness and the desert of North America and the United Snakes of America since you've been here. 
So you already have crossed.